back to another week of cleaning season. This week, we're going to learn about what it means to run the wrong way. And when I was younger, uh, I was with my uh, family. I forgot what event. I don't know which event we was at, but we was at, I was with my family. And we was at the rink, right? So, I was, I was young. So, I didn't know how, at, at the skater rink, how they switch up the rules. Like, sometimes, some people dance, like, out there, like, hey, couples only. Or you're just out there with the kids, you know, with the, with the children. And what happened in this moment? It kind of it, it, it threw me off right so we were going one way right and I didn't know when they was gonna make the switch so out of nowhere they decided to make everybody skate the opposite way and in my mind I was still going the same way I didn't know what was going on I was having fun until I turned that one corner and it was that straight away and out of nowhere, bam, I crashed into my dead. And of course, me being of the, of the smaller frame, I I fell and I cried, right? And it leads me into this lesson because you have the vision and the, and the blueprints now. So you know what to do. You know how to, you know, see where God is leading you in your life, right? And with the wisdom that you're getting from those around you. But what would you do when the world tries to swing back? Like, <laughs> with me, when you have that immovable uh, 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 object that's in front of you that is trying to push back against you. Like, you feel as if you're making the right decision, yet it, it, it feels like a, a pushback, right? Like, you're like, man, I need to do this. Like, this is what God has called me for in my life. But you have people that are you know that might not be (laughs) agreeing with what you're talking about so to dive more into the message i want to read from first kings 19 verse 9 to 10 and this is from the niv version and it's talking about elijah there he went into a cave and spent the night and the word of the Lord came to him what are you doing here Elijah he replied I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty the Israelites have rejected your covenant torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too this verse, I mean, that whole chapter is, is powerful um, because Elijah played the cards right. He did everything he was supposed to do. He followed God. He listened to him and like all the wonderful works he did. And then this moment came in his life where he was at the crossroads was like, bro, like, like, what am I doing? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like this whole tight. I'm going to get to that uh, later on. But he ran from the table when he had the upper upper hands. And those moments of fear, right? He was playing like his poker game, like in those moments of fear, like he had the upper hand. He had God. In those moments of fear, he forgot who guided him through all those victories. But in this moment, when Jezebel came about, right? So Jezebel, she was crazy. So what happened was this, uh, Elijah, uh, he had this conversation with the, uh, these, false, these false prophets, I believe it was about a hundred of them, right? And it was, like, when I, I remember when I was reading it to the kids at the school, it had, like, the children book, and uh, it was funny because he was challenging them, and they were trying to get their God to, you know, uh, to to burn their altar or whatever they was doing like and like Elijah was like hey shout louder shout louder and when Elijah came up uh, of course God came down and he uh, the, the, the altar lit up a blaze because God was proving to the world that he's the only God is no other right and after that Elijah put all the prophets to death and you know who didn't like that? 
that's right, Jezebel. And after Jezebel, after this happened, uh, Jezebel sent word to Elijah that by the next day, that she was gonna have his head. But the same thing that happened to the prophet, he was gonna die by the sword. And it's crazy because Elijah just killed like like all these prophets just died because like J Eliza had was zealous for God. He was like, man, I'm gonna do this because God, you are giving me this power to do it, right? But in that moment, he forgot who God was, right? He 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 allowed himself to be afraid by another human that is the same flesh. You know, from the dirt, from the dust, you know, from the mud, um, he allowed that to rattle him. And there are Jezebels in the world around us. We have these visions and these dreams that nobody is us, right? Like, you can't allow uh, those around you to be like, hey, like, you shouldn't do this, right? It might be not be somebody cut off your head or, or or threatening you, but it's like you have somebody in your life that's a pushback. Like, hey, like, you know, you shouldn't apply here. You 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 don't have the accolades, like, and they're trying to push you down. But you have to remember that if God gave you the goal or God gave you the peace and God is leading you to these destinations in your life, go for it. Like if you if you if you fit if you fall you're not you're not failing you're just learning it's always a learning process so even though God g gave us the roadmap like I said there's those that won't agree nor understand uh, it's not it might not be uh, 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 out of like disrespect to us but by us going through the journey then they'll be able to understand why we are the way we are. So instead of running the wrong way, run to where our hope and strength come from and allow God to do a great work in and through you. So don't run the wrong way and don't be like me and skate the wrong way and get knocked down. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. And I'll see you next week at 7 o'clock. Have a good one.